Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 937. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about how much money should you leave your kids? Because lately, lots of people have been talking about what is the right inheritance amount for children to receive. Different celebrities and very wealthy people have said they're not planning to leave all of their wealth to their children. One of those being Warren Buffett, who famously said he's going to leave much less than 50% of his wealth to his children. And there was a study done recently where nearly 70% of millionaires said they're worried about leaving their kids too much money. So I wanted to share this survey with you. I thought it was very enlightening. And I have some tips for you about crypto and your kids. So I think that's an important conversation to have. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So this article comes to us from CNBC. And it was written by Nicholas Vega. And it says, wealthy celebrities like Daniel Craig and entrepreneurs like Warren Buffett and Kevin O'Leary aren't the only ones concerned about leaving too much money to their children. Millionaires are increasingly worried about how much of their fortunes to give to their kids. That's according to a survey conducted by The Motley Fool, which asked 2,000 high net worth individuals classified as people with a net worth of over $1 million about their attitudes toward inheritances. Among the top concerns the individuals surveyed had was the possibility of leaving too much money for their heirs, something that 67% of respondents mentioned. The respondents had numerous concerns about the effects of leaving too much money to their heirs, including that the wealth would be used irresponsibly or that it would cause beneficiaries to be lazy. What's clear is that high net worth individuals are concerned about the effects of leaving too large an inheritance, Motley Fool research analyst Jack Caporal tells CNBC Make It. They are aware of and actively considering leaving inheritances with conditions that incentivize their heirs to pick up on values that they think are important, such as hard work, doing well in school, and finding a good career track. The survey found that 85% of high net worth individuals who had met certain conditions to receive their own inheritance agree that it is possible to leave too much money to an heir. Among respondents who received an inheritance worth between $500,000 and a million dollars, 84% agreed. The results and their responses were definitely guided by their own experiences, which is interesting because you get a sense from them that these were not unfounded concerns, but that they relate to their own experiences having inherited a lot of wealth, Caprol says. However, only 78.5% of those who received inheritances between $100,000 and $500,000 agreed, and 69% of those who received less than $100,000 did. But despite their concerns over what size inheritances they should leave, 60% of survey respondents said they found it very important to leave an inheritance, and roughly 34% said they planned to leave over 50% of their assets to their heirs. End of article. So here's what I want to talk to you about. You know, we all would have liked to have inherited some money, but not everybody has the same ideas of what to do with it. Some people are very responsible with money and other people aren't. Some people have studied money and really spent time educating themselves about how to handle money properly and other people haven't. So one thing I would challenge you with is when it comes to an inheritance and you want to leave something to your children, have a conversation with them while you're still here on this planet and ask them, what would you do if you inherited money? What would you do with it? What would you spend it on? Would you save any of it? Would you invest any of it? They might say something like, well, I'd buy a house and I'd go on a vacation and I'd buy a new car. They might say things like that. 
And while that might satisfy some of their immediate needs, it doesn't really help with some of their future needs, like helping them have a comfortable retirement or even being able to retire someday. Maybe it's for future college funding for grandchildren. Whatever it is, it's good to have a conversation about what are people planning to spend the money on because you might get a very different answer than what you think. They might say something like, well, I'd put a swimming pool in the backyard and buy a jet ski. You know, those things are not things that will add value to the house necessarily. The swimming pool won't anyway. Uh, The jet ski, of course, is a depreciating asset that's going to be worthless in a few years. So basically, if that's their answer, they've thrown the money in the trash, pretty much. And it's not something that's going to appreciate or increase their net worth. What you want to see them do with it is maybe enjoy themselves, maybe have a nice vacation or something, but also maybe put something away for the future. Invest it either in the stock market, in the real estate market, or something like that where it can grow over time. Because that's the only way that they're actually going to keep the net worth part of it that they inherited. And a lot of people just find that free money is something that they can spend until it's all gone. They don't even think about investing it. So this is a really important conversation for you to have and maybe even a point of education for your children. And it's not too far to say that if you have a large amount you're leaving to your kids, that you think about maybe even putting some conditions on it. Like some of it could be spent on buying a home for them or on education, but that it's not just all left up to them what they spend their money on. Another thing you want to do is think about your kids with your cryptocurrencies. Because I'm convinced that cryptocurrencies have higher than normal compounding rates and are going to be worth a lot of money in the future, just three to five years from now, probably at a minimum, I don't think it's a good idea to put cryptocurrency in your children's name or in their possession. In other words, I don't recommend opening up a crypto account and putting your kid's name on it. Because if that account does become worth millions of dollars, they have full access to it and you might actually be stunting their future growth. That's right, I think going to school and getting a job is actually character building. And if they don't have to go to school and figure out how to earn a living, it might actually be stunting their growth as a human. And I don't think that's a good thing. While it's wonderful to help our kids and we always wanna give a helping hand and try to help make life a little bit easier, We also don't want to get to the point where our kids turn out to be lazy or worse, get into some sort of trouble or hang out with the wrong people and get into an addiction. So being overly generous with your kids and accidentally getting them millions of dollars in their crypto account could actually ruin their life and stunt their growth. And we don't want that. So keep the crypto in your possession and you can make annual gifts to them if you want to, but don't put it in their name where it may get out of control in a good way, but end up ruining their life in a bad way. So I thought this was a great article to start a conversation around inheritance with the family and talk about some things that might be a little bit uncomfortable to talk about under normal circumstances. But this study, I think, gives us some good statistics, some good foundation to talk about, and just to bring up with the kids and kind of take their temperature and see what they're feeling about certain things. It might really surprise you. And you really need to know what they're going to do with the money. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as new podcasts are available so you never miss one of them. And don't forget, Be Wealthy and Smart is also available on Alexa. So just ask Alexa to play Be Wealthy and Smart. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.